G'day guys, Jake here with Journey Van Builds. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a complete tour of the kitchen that I've installed in my 2009 Toyota Hiace. That'll include a few of my favorite design features that make this a really practical build, as well as a few things that haven't worked quite the way I'd hoped after six months living in the van. So let's get stuck in. Straight away at the side door here, we've got two of the features which are most practical in this whole kitchen build, and that is the outdoor cooking area and the access to running water at the side door. For outdoor cooking, I've got this little pull-out bench top. It's on push to open drawer runner, so it locks away when it's not in use. It's got room for a chopping board or a gas burner like this one. But yeah, it's a really nice little table. I use it every day, whether it is for cooking or just for some hummus and dip or something like that. Up next, we have one of my favorite features of the entire van build, which is access to running water at the side door here. It's one of the few changes that I've made between this and my last build because I recognize whether it's washing feet off after a day at the beach or filling up a drink bottle on the go, you don't always want to be climbing back into your van to get access to water. So like I said, absolutely love this feature, definitely recommend it to anyone. Moving inside here, we have the three kitchen drawers. The larger one down the bottom here is for my pot, salad bowl, larger food items, anything that doesn't fit anywhere else basically. In the middle, we have plates and bowls, tins and jars. At the top is for cutlery and spices and miscellaneous. They're all on push to open drawer runners like all of the drawers in the van. So they lock themselves when they're not in use, which is great. And they're all right next to the door here. So when I'm cooking at my outdoor kitchen, I have access to everything I need right there. The final two drawers of the kitchen cabinetry are in here around the fridge. The first one over the top is the notorious utility drawer. Every van's got to have one. Everything lives in this drawer here. It can get really messy at times, but it's absolutely critical to have somewhere just to stash all of these sort of generic items. Next to that over here, we have the vertical drawer, which is crazy useful. Again, this is an addition since my last van where I realized there was nowhere to store taller items like a bottle of wine or oil, uh, things like that. So this one is really, really handy. I've also got a larger fry pan hanging in here, a tea towel, a chopping board, and also a little bin, which is something that I forgot to allow for on my last build. So this is a really cool little way to make use of space if you've just got an extra like 150 mil at the end of some cabinetry, if you really wanna to go to the extra effort. Next, in pride of place, in the middle of the kitchen, of course, we have the 52 liter Bushman's fridge. I've gone for this stand-up option because of the way that it fits into the design of the kitchen so well. The standard chest fridge freezers that you'll see in a lot of camp setups they are a little bit more energy efficient because they have a thicker insulation, but because of that thicker insulation, they're harder to design around. And with the opening from top, again, it's just an absolute nightmare to fit other things around it. The stand-up fridges, they typically aren't as energy efficient as the chest fridges without the thick insulation. So you need to get really good quality to allow for that to reduce the drainage on your battery. If or when, rather, your battery does fail for some reason, you run out of battery. Um, with a stand-up fridge, everything is going to defrost, the freezer section is going to defrost, and it will leak water down onto your floorboards. So that's just something to bear in mind. With a stand-up fridge, you want to make sure that your electronic system is really up to scratch and it's not going to be going dead all the time. In the corner here next to the fridge, behind the mysterious curtain, we have one of the more unusual yet really important design elements of this whole kitchen, and that is an empty space. Three reasons that this is a really important part of the kitchen design. First of all being that it cannot be overstated how important having some free space is in the van. You just be able to chuck some shopping, a big backpack or whatever just makes its way into the van with you in that space, out of sight, out of mind. Secondly, I wanted it to be possible to put a camp toilet in here. So the space is big enough for a camp toilet. For me, it's not necessary. So I would rather have the open space. Thirdly, and most importantly, this open space allows me to make incredible use of this back corner here, which is notoriously the hardest part of the van build to make use of. Moving into the corner here, we have the entire self-contained plumbing system. So what that means is on the outside of the van, there is a water inlet 
which feeds my 42 liter freshwater tank, which is sealed in this back corner here. So that then supplies the 12 volt pump, which is again inside the corner here mounted onto the wall. And that's got a automatic pressure switch in it, which feeds the tank here in the corner as well as the hose at the side door. Once the water runs out of the tap here and into the sink, it then runs down the gray waste into a 20 liter gray water tank on the bottom of the van. Being able to put that underneath the van and not have to stash it somewhere in here, that frees up so much room, which is really, really handy as well. For me, that's a really ideal uh, ratio, 42 liters fresh water, 20 liters gray water because you end up drinking a lot of your water or using it for cooking, things like that. So you do not need the same amount of gray water as you have fresh water. I'm not really happy with the situation in the corner here. Camping taps are incredibly ugly and to get anything else, it's incredibly expensive. Um, this is a homemade sink, which does the job. Um, certainly not pretty, but it was a bit cheaper. This is something I would like to work on to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but yeah, for now, that's the way it is. Now down on the side here, sort of attached to the kitchen cabinetry is where I have a kind of electronics hub. So down the bottom here, that's my battery monitor, which tells me the state of charge of the battery, as well as what's coming in through solar or the alternator and what's going out through all of the lights, USB ports, fridge, all of those things. So that's really cool to sort of geek out about and look at exactly how much power you're drawing versus what's coming in through solar at any given moment. Um, above that, I've got the dimmer switch, which is maybe a little bit extra but just gives me the option to dim all the lights. It is actually really nice because you rarely want the lights on all the way. Next to that, just a standard USB port, USB-C, USB-3. And in the corner here is just a little kill switch for the pump, if anything were to ever go wrong with the automatic pressure sensor. Then I guess on the wall here, moving on, is this little niche here or nook. As you can see, I haven't really found any groundbreaking functional use for it, but it's just seemed like a waste to be blocking out all that space uh, within the wall cavity. So I sort of just wanted to play around with it and see if I could get some more use out of the space. But it seems to be kind of a favorite feature actually. Everyone enjoys the nooks when they look at the van. We've got the curtains as well. All the curtains in this van were just purchased for one big home curtain uh, from Bunnings which I've chopped and sewed up to make fit for the front here and the rear curtains as well. And they're all just on runners like this one. So they all just open and close. It was kind of my mission throughout this whole van build to create an unbelievably functional, practical use of the space. But while doing that, maintain a nice kind of pretty aesthetic as well to not sacrifice any of that and just to settle for basically ugly camper van uh, aesthetics everything except for that tap. It was always my vision to have some nice hardwoods against white. So that's basically the aesthetic for the whole build. Um, this is a really nice timber hardwood bench top from Bunnings. And for all of the draw fronts as well, I've gone for a shaker style draw front, just a little bit of trim around the outsides of those. I think going the extra mile, that's what gives it the, the little bit of character and make it home. So yeah, that's it for today's video. As you can tell, I love this stuff. If you have any questions about what you've seen or any questions about your own build, absolutely far away. I would love to be able to answer any questions and help wherever I can. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.